Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And here we're going to look at the Naaman Pearson lemma and do one example to illustrate it. But first I want to introduce something called the likelihood ratio. And that in this hypothesis testing setting, so that we have some parameter that we want to learn about, and it's in the parameter space omega. Omega can be partitioned into two disjoint sets. So omega is 0, omega 1, they're disjoint. And pick one of the values in the omega 0. And pick a, a value in, that lives in the omega 1 space. Then the joint density or joint probably mass function, depending upon whether X is discrete or continuous, then this is it. It's the product of those uh, individual functions, you know, over our, our sample. And so we define the likelihood ratio as the ratio of these two joint like or joint you know densities. And you know, everyone has their way of doing it. You could put the null, hop, you know, the F0 above F1 or vice versa. Um, I've seen it both ways, but we're going to do it this way initially. Now, you could also take the log likelihood of it, and that's just you take the natural log of the likelihood, and it becomes a log likelihood. Now, to look at the name and Pearson lemon, we're in a hypothesis testing setting. And it's simple versus simple hypotheses. So the it is, and I didn't state that here, but that's what it is. So our sample, or the parameter space has two points, uh, theta 0 and theta 1. We set up our test function this way. It takes on the values 1, gamma, and 0. And it's a 1, meaning we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative if this relationship is true for some positive value C. Now gamma being between 0 and 1 is we reject the null hypothesis with probability gamma if these two quantities are equal. And it, uh, phi is 0, which means we accept the null hypothesis if this quantity, you know, this inequality holds. So we have uh, known constants, gamma, and positive uh, real valued number uh, they're such that the size of the test is alpha and we define this quantity in, in the uh, previous videos in this little playlist so let's let delta be any other test function such that the size of the fu the test function delta is less than or equal to the size of the test function phi if this is the case and we define our test function in this way, then the, the uh, type 2 error, probability of a type 2 error, is always, for phi, is always less than or equal to the type 2 error, probability of a type 2 error associated with delta. Now, often it's just simply stated like this. You know, the, the size for delta, you know, if the size for delta is less than or equal to the size for, you know, phi, then the, you know, type 2 error probability of a type 2 error is less than or equal for phi is less than or equal to the probability of a type 2 error for delta. Now the proof, we're going to, it's very short because we did a lot of the heavy work in the previous video. So in the previous video, which I called minimizing a linear combination of type 1 and type 2 errors, we proved that any linear combination, we proved it even more general than the name and Pearson lemma, that a linear combination of the type 1 and type 2 errors is always, you know, when the test function is defined like this, is always less than or equal to that same linear combination of the type 1 and type 2 errors for any other test function. Now, that was proven in the previous video. But in this video, we're assuming that the, the size for delta is less than or equal to the size for phi. And so since this is less than this, then it, then it ensures that beta of phi is less than or equal to beta of delta. And we're finished. And so the name and Pearson lemma, when set up like this, creates a most powerful test. 
Now, quick question, just thought of it. Why am I not saying a uniformly most powerful test? And the, and the answer is because we are doing a simple versus simple hypothesis test. And so it's just most powerful. Now, if the, you know, if one of these or more are composite, and I think specifically the alternative has to be composite hypothesis, then you can talk about what uniformly most powerful, but you can't hear because it's simple versus simple. All right, so a quick example. So let's let our data be binomial with uh, parameters one and P, which you can also call it a Bernoulli distribution with P. Let's say we have a sample of size 10, or probably mass function would be for, you know, a data point would be this, and then the joint probably mass function would be the product across our sample, which would be this. And we're gonna um, we're gonna call just redefine y as the sum of the x's, you know, from one to ten, and then this then this is ten minus x. So now what we want to do is create an alpha equal 0.05 test with the probability of the type 2 error minimized. And this is how we do it. And according to the Neyman Pearson lemon, well, of course, we, you know, we have to assume that we're interested in two points. So is P equal 0.2 or is P equal 0.4? Now we can use the Neyman Pearson lemon. So it has to be set up in this fashion. And so we're going to have to determine gamma and C to make this test, you know, what we wanted, an alpha 0.05 and minimize the type 2 error. So the expected value of our test function, that's how we get at the size of the test. So it's, it's 1 times the probability of this happening, which is this piece here. So I just divided the F0 over. And actually, so look at this. This looks like the likelihood ratio. And then here it's gamma times the probability of this happening, which is this, and then plus zero times the probability of that happening, which so I just leave it out. Now, let's look at this piece in more detail, which is this piece. Now we can plug in what we know for these probably mass functions, which is this. So to look at this probability, now the only thing random here is y. So let's, let's try to isolate y by itself. And so this piece can simplify to this. Then if we divide that piece over, take the natural log of both sides, and then divide by, you know, then the y comes out front, and it's a, we get this. So, and, and, yeah, so I left y on this side, and then, you know, took every, all the constants to this side. Now, y being the sum of Bernoulli's is what's called a binomial distribution. And so, if we this is a constant. And so, if we just redefine it as c prime, we're looking for this probability, the probability that y is greater than some constant, where y is a binomial with parameters, you know, 10 and p. Now, since we want to find this is, uh, we want to find alpha 0.05. We have to assume that the null hypothesis is true. So the pro and so you can look at a table, use the R software. The probability that Y is greater than four is 0 0.0328. And if, if we went with Y greater than uh, five, then th it becomes too big. It's too big for alpha, so we can't use it. So this is the first one that we can. But when we say the probability it, that it's equal four, so you know we're looking at this piece now, that's 0 0.08. But when we add those, it's too much. So we have to pick the gamma such that it makes it 0 0.05, and that gamma is 0 0.195. So if we determine the size of the test, so it's the expected value of this, assuming the null hypothesis is true, then we bring them down, and then this 
product and sum is 0.05. So now we've created a alpha 0.05 test. C is now once we know this, we can uh, we can back solve for C here, right? So we know that C prime has to be four. And so if this is 4, then we can back solve for C, which is this, and we can put it in there. So now we have all the components for this test. And so it's a 0.05 test that minimizes the type 2 error. Now, usually most people write it like this. So instead of, of this, They'll, they can just rewrite the test function as this. Phi of, of our data is 1, and this is gamma, which we determined. But instead of using the, you know, the likelihood ratio or the joint probability mass functions, we just keep it as y, or the sum of the, of the x's. So if, if the sum of the, our data is more than 4, or equal to 4, or less than 4, then we create this test. Okay, well that's all I have for this video. The next uh, two, maybe three videos, I'm going to do more simple versus simple hypothesis testing using the Neyman Pearson lemon. So hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.